talking about a few things today, but firstly, there'll be a lot of people in the audience that would like to know a little bit more about A1, because it really is quite an interesting story as an operator. More so in recent years, you've made a lot of changes. Tell us more about A1. Well, A1 uh, is uh, originally from uh, Austria, uh, and we expanded uh, to East and uh, Southern Europe, so to Serbia, Slovenia, Croatia, Belarus, and uh, also Bulgaria. Um, yeah, we uh, are basically focusing where originally separated was a mobile business, and 13 years ago, uh, the, the, the fixed business <coughs> and mobile business uh, moved together. We are focusing uh, on ICT business, uh, so we have all this uh, security and collaboration and data center and whatever, like everybody, uh, or most, most in the market. Uh, so that's basically what is uh, Avon uh, Austria Group, and I'm from Avon Austria, uh, is all about. Yeah. And what have your, what's your particular role? Because it's an interesting title. Well, I'm uh, on the B2B, so we have, we have two business units. Uh, it's consumer and, uh, and uh, business, uh, business unit enterprise. So I'm responsible on one side for the uh, post sales activities in terms of uh, our I ICT delivery. On the other side, I'm responsible for the digital transformation for the business unit enterprise. Um, so I'm actually stepping in for Helmut, he was supposed to be here, he's the IT uh, responsible person, but as I was here, I just jumped in. Yeah. You know, when he heard I was doing the interview, he chickened out. I think he fell very sick. <laughs> it seems so. Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> Roman will tell you, it was a very sudden illness, that yeah. one. But you're doing a great job yeah. so far. We're going to ask more questions in a moment. Roman, tell us a little bit more about what you do at Amdocs too. And what's, what's Vubiquity? Vubiquity. So, um, Vubiquity is all about media supply chain. So when you get content from large studios like Disney, Warner Brothers, etc., the intent is to get all the content that they have, do work on it, and get it to the telcos. And um, on the Amdocs uh, side, I run the marketplace solutions. So I think Anthony mentioned uh, about partner engagement and ecosystem uh, out of his five pillars. So that's the focus of marketplace, which is market partner engagement and partner lifecycle management. So we have a SaaS platform where we are onboarding uh, OTT partners, um, you know, subscription partners like VPN, security, lifestyle apps, so that on one side, partners can only integrate once to us, and then when we can integrate to many telcos, and telcos only have to integrate once to us and get access to all the partners. Okay. So we're trying to solve that, that that part of the thing. I'm going to come back to that in a moment because you're, you've had experience with a number of operators and I want, to, I want to get more feedback on that. But firstly, about, about A1, look, can you elaborate more on, on your company strategy um, and how, you, how do you see it evolving in the future, particularly uh, in additional types of subscription or expansion to offer to businesses? Because we hear a lot about the consumer side and a lot of people are telling us how they're going to monetize enterprise and business, but how are you going to go about it? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what, uh, what we did, uh, we started basically on the consumer side, on the inter entertainment side, and then we have uh, um, TV platform, music, and so on. Um, and uh, here we want to expand also in terms of insurance and so on. So MDOX uh, might be here of some support um, to go faster. Uh, in terms of uh, what we heard already, faster partner onboarding uh, commercially and technically. Um, my focus is very strong, as I said before, is on the B2B side. So we are about uh, to start basically this Lego business uh, we just heard uh, from Telenor. They uh, seem to be far ahead. Um, and uh, what we want to do is actually uh, to do for uh, the small and medium uh, customers, and then of course also for the enterprise business, uh, that we modelize basically our business, uh, our processes, uh, uh, and our architecture uh, for all these business fields we have currently, meaning of course mobile fixed, but also the ICT business like security, data center, collaboration, and so on, and also expanding in terms of verticals. So we. Uh, we have kind of solution business in terms of health, or we have also business in terms of um, um, 
public sector solutions and so on, but it's, it's all not modernized. Uh, so we want to build this platform uh, in order to really um, yeah, make uh, huge efficiency gains and, of course, grow um, because we all have the same problem. Exactly. Uh, getting always less uh, people and uh, the request from our shareholder is to get more revenue. So at the end, um, platform business is uh, one way out of it. But it takes uh, quite some years. Aren't those shareholders a pain in the neck? Mm -hmm. They always want more revenue. It I seems don't know so. what that problem is. Yeah, well. We've got to live with it, haven't we? You have to live with it, yeah. <laughs> Raman, very quickly, coming back to you on the, you, we're, we're talking about marketplaces a lot, and we've seen them. Your particular offering, and what we're working with here at A1, is a subscription marketplace. Explain what that is. Yeah, so first of all, thanks, uh, thanks to A1 Group for selecting our marketplace solution. Uh, subscription marketplace is essentially um, getting all subscription partners that a telco wants, get them onboarded, uh, all the way from partner settlement, partner monetization, you know, let's say you sell a thousand subscriptions of Spotify or a VPN uh, software that you want to sell to your customers. Right. Um, you, every month you do X number of subscriptions, there's some cancellations, ads, etc. You do net billing so that you can sell with your partner, you can keep your revenue and then make it all automated. You can also provide insights to partners. Okay. What kind of subscribers are churning out, what kinds are adding. I think uh, Anthony showed that airplane picture, which was pretty nice with the cockpit. So we're trying to get more insights that you can deliver to your partners. Where, where are operators doing that now? Where they've got subscription systems, obviously, and billing systems, presumably, and they have the information of the, of the customer. Is that being transferred specifically to the platform or the marketplace, and then you're linking it with all the suppliers of the services? Does it become one? Yeah, so we are, we're not trying to replace any billing systems or anything, right? Of course, if the customer wants, we can do that. What we're trying to do is have a very, very sharp and narrow focus on on subscriptions and partners, because billing systems today are geared more towards uh, telco offerings, product catalogs, yep. enterprises, but, but the world is going to subscription. Today you may want Netflix, tomorrow you may want Max, then the day after you may want Apple One as a subscription, or Google Play, or Microsoft Office 365. We all subscribe to these services. The problem is that today there's no elegant way to add, delete, churn, and also for partners to onboard using, let's say, self-onboarding APIs right. so that you can expand to a long tail set of partners yep. that may suit your particular circumstance and countries. So that's, that's the problem we're solving. Now, I get that for consumers very easily, but how is that going to work for B2B and B2C, which you're most actively involved with, particularly the B2B? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you, uh, like we heard before, you have to separate a, li a little bit. So it's uh, the, the small and medium customers are a bit different, uh, but uh, and uh, from the large uh, businesses. But the, the the goal basically is that uh, also the large businesses uh, have a certain share of self-service. I mean, we have we have a marketplace on the P2P side currently just for software and whatever, but the experience shows that customers don't really respond to it. Uh, so it's basically the salespeople or somebody else who has to support them, that they, get, they register, that they uh, use the product, and even if they do uh, further, um, uh, well, uh, um, further uh, requests and whatever, it's difficult. So what we want to do is basically start with kind of framework uh, agreements uh, where we set it initially up and then also the larger customers basically can do all the, the things we just uh, said before. So like uh, getting uh, uh, new uh, products or new bundles, uh, removing them, upgrading them, whatever. So that's actually the way we want to do it. Yeah. Good point you made. Removing them is almost as important sometimes as getting them on. Yes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't go there. Raman, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, recently, CSPs have been taking the leadership, I think very much so, in the development of platforms and marketplaces for consumers. As we've seen just before now, yeah. they're really out there doing it. We've seen it in the earlier presentations this morning. But can you elaborate more around the strategy of CSPs and, and how do you see it evolving in the future? Because they usually 
run for a while and then they realise it's not working out the way we wanted to. You know, is that what's going to be seen in the future? Or are there additional types of subscriptions happening? And, you know, or is there expansion for solutions in the businesses? And how are they going to offer solutions on, a, on that marketplace? Is it going to... How is this going to manage it? What are they doing? And how do you see it evolving is more the question. Yeah, and I'm sorry to refer to Anthony again and again. He mentioned you can build the best platform, but if the users don't show up, what's the point? Yep. So we can help our partners with the stack, but you got to find the right way to do a go-to-market and get customers to come to you. Yeah. So we've seen some strategies, um, you know, m mostly on the media side because it's easy to excite consumers. So in Singapore, one of the telcos uh, started to send smart speakers and the smart speaker has their own marketplace app. So you subscribe to the smart speaker. As part of that, you get a couple of OTT entertainment apps for free. And the hope is that customers will start engaging with it. You also saw Sky Glass launch in the UK. I think they are also talking to some other telcos as syndication. And the idea is to do a hard uh, a device together with their own subscriptions and try to push the marketplace concept there. We also see customers, I think increasingly so, trying to bring value around bundling. So I was actually with Netflix uh, two days back. I was in Amsterdam, I'm coming from Amsterdam, and Netflix is having a lot of discussions with telcos to do kind of bundling, yes. where they can do ex more excited offerings, especially with ad tiers. But I think telcos, I think they are, but I think they need to know, do more with partners to make buzz in the marketplace. Because consumers need to know that they can get these services from telco and there should be a, a good why, why they should go and buy it from a telco as opposed to from the, you know. It's, it's not our first choice as consumers. Exactly. We don't go and buy those exactly. services and applications and, and things like Netflix from telcos. Right. Although the telcos are offering them and sometimes agree. at a discounted price. And I've never understood why we haven't instilled that confidence. Yeah. And maybe it's just the simplicity. We've got used to going to an app store, doing a search, going to click, and it happens to us. So sure. maybe, is that part of the problem? Is the simplicity an issue for our, our customers? Yeah, I, think, I think simplicity, and I think there was a concern that telcos had is that they didn't want to put all the subscriptions on their own bill, because then the bill will become big. Yes. So I think you can solve that with other you know, credit card payments and stuff like that. But I think the, the, the go-to market is the most critical one. And especially outside U.S., telcos have more chance of success uh, because I feel customers uh, trust telcos more and the you know, big apps from Silicon Valley, etc., are trying to expand internationally and it's not easy for them to go to every country. Plus, the local flavor is very important. Yeah. So apps in Eastern Europe, in Germany, in Austria in Indonesia and in India are very different and so, very unique. So you think that's an advantage? Exactly. I Locality think that's and location is an advantage. Yeah. And uh, I, I was interested in uh, Anthony's presentation. He's got a large group. So is Russia. They've, they've, they've got a group of countries. Yeah. How you manage the requirements of all those countries because they have, they're consumer. Russia mentioned the point of knowing what the consumer wants. The consumer doesn't know what he wants. Sometimes you've got to tell them, I'm, I'm a consumer and I have no idea what I want until somebody brings something to me. Yeah. Is the marketplace going to do that? Is it going to say Yeah, I think, I think what Rishim uh, said was an, a very important point, which is she's saying she's breaking the monolith, or Telenor is breaking the monolith, if I understood correctly, and bringing it as a service. So they're trying to build a lot of flexi flexibility in their stack yep. so that they're more agile to the customers. I think that's the best, best approach because yep. you don't know what the customers want. But we know, one thing is for sure, customers are subscribing to all sorts of subscriptions. So why not do it through a telco and become the new bundle, right? Okay, I agree.